Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. On today's video, we're actually at Andrew's Custom Leather. Sam's here. Good day. Sam, <laughs> you're hosting something different. <laughs> I've never seen you do this. You, well, you've been working here, but what's going on? Well, we had the space when Eric needed to introduce his mm -hmm. special Fallout rifle and pistol set. Yeah. So here's where everybody gathered. Yeah, absolutely. So Dominic that works with Sam, he made a really cool rig for oh, Fallout. He's a big Fallout outfit, fan. Absolutely. Yes. So today we're going to show you Dominic's rig. We've also got Joanna and Rolando here. They're with Locked and Loaded Latinos and also with Geeks and Gamers. They're doing a lot of you know cool stuff with those guys. So basically we had Pete from Carolina Custom Cases. Also with Eric from Cheating Death Customs. So you know Pete built the case and then Eric built the guns that are in there and since these guys are all dressed up I was made to get dressed up. The whole shop turned into, turned a, into a movie, a movie set here. Ah. <laughs> there you go. So, I mean, you've done movies before. You've done stuff that's in movies. Right. We're going to show you guys all the going-ons behind the scene here. And we're going to send Sam back to work. <laughs> right, Sam? Making no holsters. Shortage. No yeah. shortage. What are you work. making? What's the, what's the most holster that you're making now? Well, right now, since you and I did a video, uh, a carjacker cross uh -oh. has exploded. Okay, there you go. We have got <laughs> buckets and tables full of them, which you can see right over yeah. here. So that Sam's be... working on them, trust me. <laughs> the whole night. time we're working, he's working on those holsters. So we're going to go to that right now. Hey, I'm Peter with Carolina Custom Foam. I'm here on the Fallout Project with Cheating Death Customs, and I want to show you what we've come up with for the 25th anniversary of Fallout. We have this case that I hand-painted. Uh, it was a case that I ordered and spent probably about 30 hours planning and then painting and then destroying um, to get that uh, wasteland feel to it. All sorts of scrapes and burning with blowtorch. We got some blood stains uh, in it, and we picked the vault, Vault 34, to be the vault that this case came from. Now, Vault 34 was out of uh, Fallout's New Vegas, and had a NPC by the name of Pearl, who was from Vault 34. Vault 34 fell to the Gunners, and this is going to be. This is the box, one of the box from the armory of Vault 34. Um, that was raided and brought out into the wasteland. So as you can see, it's Vault-Tex Vault true branding. Everything's blue and, and yellow. And now it's been drug out when it was clean and roughed up and all the fighting in the wasteland. So inside this case, we have, uh, as you can tell, it's been through a lot. Um, and the inside uh, is a mixture of both the clean vault tech look and motif and uh, what what happened in the actual wasteland when that happened. Um, to start off, we this part, the clean and nice clean part, is um, how it was made for these items. The sidearm, the rifle, some grenades. But as this got drug out, they needed places to put things that they scavenged in the wasteland. So we got a couple spots for Nuka-Cola. Um, we have some Mintas, um, and we also threw some caps, bottle caps in the Mintas. We have a Bowie knife, and we have a stem pack, and all these things weren't in it, so you can see that they would have to dig out and burn spots for these items that would go inside the case. Um, to start all off, we have the uh, rifle by Cheating Death Customs, which you'll hear more about, the sidearm by Cheating Death Customs, you'll hear more about. 
we were able to work with Apocalypse John from Wasteland, and he gave, made us this really, really dope Bowie knife. Um, and we have a pretty big backstory to all of this, but I wanted to make it seem like the whole idea flew. So if you look inside, you can see in the front, there are burn marks on both sides to where when the rifle was put away, it was more than likely put away hot and it would end up burning spots there. You can see on this side where there was an explosion, how the explosion came up over and wrapped into the case and burned the foam there in that small area. You can see where there has been some burning and some um, ripping and tearing of them putting something in, but then through all of the firefights and explosions, things got hot. Looks like someone got shot or hurt, lots of blood. Um, we have uh, on the side, we have blood handles um, where these are all burnt and melted. Um, and of course, they're a little bit on the bloody side. So it's a whole kind of vibe as far as the whole wasteland process, uh, the, the wasteland theme. Um, and I think we nailed it pretty good. Uh, hopefully, um, you guys will enjoy this. This whole kit. Uh, firearms, everything will be going on sale. It is a custom one of one. The firearms, firearms are one of one. Uh, all these props are, uh, some of them are made and ordered, but a couple of them are handmade by me, and the case is also handmade by me. So. Yeah. So, Pete, yep. you know, I don't know anyone else that does foam like you, right? You're a foam artist. And obviously, over the years, I've seen you uh, take on a lot of projects. What you do is ridiculously creative man um you know so if you guys are looking for anything like this you definitely want to check out carolina customs now you said this is a one-off right Correct. are you going to do other stuff like this maybe if folks want to in the fallout world i do take commission work and so if okay. somebody really wants a, a fallout commission piece of work yes mm -hmm. there's a difference between a special run uh, limited edition and a one of versus a custom piece. Mm -hmm. So a custom piece is going to come in a case which is made by Nanook. It's a handgun case or a rifle case, whatever. Uh, okay. It locks up. Mm -hmm. All the stuff to keep everything safe. Um, this is is completely out of the norm. It's something that me and Eric have worked on for a long time. So this type of thing will only pops up uh, when I have the passion to do so, right. which is in between <laughs> yeah. the designing cases for other people so the answer is yes but not to this extent right they still look yes. super dope and uh you know one of the things i like about you like me you're driven by passion mm -hmm. and pete is put together like a kind of short film yeah yeah you know so that's going to be out you guys can see it we'll run some background stuff in yeah for you all so great Absolutely. great stuff here you know right. that that you did and i was very surprised to come to sam andrews you know andrews custom leather here uh, I knew something was going on. I knew Dom was doing something. The next thing I know, I heard from Pete. He's like, oh, yeah, man, I'm going to be there. Then I heard from Rolanda and Joanna, like, oh, yeah, I think yesterday that you're going to be here. And I'm, I'm pretty glad that we got together. This is how things happen, right? Just spur of the moment. This whole day has just flown, just, just, just flowed. Yeah. Like there was, there, there was really just a bunch of people get together, take some content, show this thing off, show yeah. it to the world, right? Yeah. We wanted... Um, Locked and Loaded Latinos to be able to drop this on their platform mm -hmm. and um, get some eyes via through them yeah. uh, on it before right. we released it to the world. And then it turned into, hey, we got a couple of people here dressed up and then, right. hey, let's make a little movie. And right. then now we're outside sweating. Good work. And making movies and Hank is, yeah. is the star of the show in the movie. Not so. really. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Joanna's going to take that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate thank you. It. I appreciate Bye, it. Brother. Hi, my name is Eric Gonzalez of Cheating Death Customs in Miami, Florida. And today, we're going to take a look at this one-off project for the 25th year anniversary of Fallout New Vegas. So, earlier this year, we decided to bring back the SA-35, which is in the game Fallout New Vegas, called the 9mm pistol which is basically a Browning High Power, which is issued to one of the factions in the game called the NCR, the New California Republic. Mm -hmm. And about three years prior, we did a limited run of 10 1911s okay. that were also inspired and based on the, on, on the game, but we only did 10. So of course, as soon as the 10 guns ran out, everybody started asking for more. So 
we had committed to 10, 10 were built, and that was it. So I was uh, made aware of the fact that in the game there's this clone of the Browning High Power called the 9mm pistol, so we agreed to do a limited run of 10 pistols. Oh, 10 for these as well. These They're are very pretty, popular, by the way. Yes, they are. Yeah. They are amazingly popular handguns. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure inside the game, but I know outside the game, in the gun world, very popular. Yes, they are. Okay. Yes, they are. And it, and it so happens to be my favorite gun after the 1911. Nice. So, so what have you guys done? Okay, so the gun starts out as a brand new SA-35 from Springfield Armory. Okay. And we basically fire the gun and inspect it to make sure that out of the factory it comes the way it, it's functioning the way it should. Okay. We test it for function and accuracy. After that, we completely... Uh, disassemble the gun and we and I do what is called an, an aging process which you basically dehorn and deburr and take away all of the sharp edges of the gun so if you feel the gun the gun not only looks old but if you feel the gun you will see that there are absolutely yeah. no sharp so edges. So that feels used. Feels like used. it has like that uh, or, worked in, yeah. Yes. Very nice. And instead of de-stressing the gun, taking the finish that the gun comes from factory and just distressing it, mm -hmm. what we do is we prep the gun in a certain way to make it blue in a way that it appears to be aged and old. Okay. So you're not removing any kind of protective, protective finish, I'm sorry, from the gun. Mm -hmm. You're just finishing it in a different way that makes the gun look old okay. and worn and rusted. Okay. Did you guys do anything on here? that uh, with these limited 10, someone's gonna be able to look at and know that it came from you? Yes, on, okay. the, on the inside, again, this is, this is a prototype, which mm -hmm. this is one of the things that Peter and I spoke about. As a, as a habit, as a rule, I never get rid of any of my first offer in my prototype. Okay. So because this was the 25th year anniversary of Fallout, we wanted to do something that we had never done super before. Super special. Yeah. Super special. No one gives up their prototypes, by the way. Correct. Okay, good. So it's not yeah, me. I'm not crazy. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Right. Uh, so, yes, um, on all of our guns on the inside of the dust frame, mm -hmm. uh, they will be on the dust cover of the frame, I'm sorry, you will have the date that the gun was finished. Okay. And it'll have uh, Fallout New Vegas, actually F O N V for mm -hmm. Fallout New Vegas. And then the number of your gun in the series. So if you would get number two, it will be F O N V two or three and four and until ten. Okay. And also, it is going to come with a knife, not that knife, because that's mm -hmm. a one-off mm -hmm. by, by John. Mm -hmm. But we haven't decided yet, for the limited run of 10, what knife. But that knife will also come serialized to the gun. Oh, okay. And by the way, Peter is also doing the custom cases oh, for that project. So the case, the knife, and the gun will all come serialized okay. to themselves. And you pro I don't know if you have pricing or not, but I would encourage folks to check out your website, right? Because all of that is going to be there. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yes, right. once we get first... I'm going to be honest with you, we're going to have fun with this first because mm -hmm. we've all worked very hard, very long hours for this, mm -hmm. and we haven't had a chance to enjoy it yet. Yeah. <laughs> so so we're going to enjoy it first, have fun with our creation, right. and then, yes, it will be placed. Get very handsy. All right, let's take a look at the rifle. Yes. The rifle, again, this rifle actually started out in the concept about 2017. And last year, I was convinced by, by a group of uh, young men that wanted to get into the AR-15 world, mm -hmm. who happened to be huge fans of Fallout, mm -hmm. especially Fallout New Vegas. And the concept of the project was building community around the gun that we all love, which is what I call the, the rifle of every American, or America's rifle, right? The right. M16. Absolutely. So the idea was, okay, let's create the best service rifle, like in the game, that we can create, but make it our own. Mm -hmm. The last thing we wanted to do was to copy the rifle as it was in the game. Because although it requires a lot of skill to copy something, it really doesn't require a lot of imagination. Mm -hmm. So this is what we came up with. It's basically a service rifle, camouflaged in a custom camo pattern, uh, done by me, which is similar to the camouflage on the Gobi campaign okay. uh, scout rifle. So we figured, okay, the NCR is in the desert. They would naturally want to have a desert camouflage rifle. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and did that. And we reached out to the good people at Braunels, and they were amazing with their support. Uh, the, the parts 
from their retro line are amazing. They oh, so fit. This is from the retro line. Yes, right everything in this rifle, okay. except for the optic, came from Brunel's and the barrel. Okay. Uh, they came from one of the the brothers in the uh, uh, Brunel's Bureau of Propaganda. Okay. Patrick from TNT e Sales. Literally days within. Okay. The, our deadline. He he sent us the barrel. Heck, he did the entire upper assembly oh, for us, awesome. just so we can meet the deadline. Okay, great. Yeah. DOP man, yeah. coming through. Yeah, the brotherhood you. coming through. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, the folks from Armson USA LLC, yeah. as soon as they heard of the project, they wanted to cooperate. They wanted to jump in, and they sent us several of their old school OEG sites. Okay. And they said, Eric, the beautiful thing about these is they don't require batteries. They don't have wires. Mm -hmm. The perfect optic for like a post-apocalyptic scenario. Okay, so the optic is actually set up like this, or is this because of fallout? No, uh, several modders mm -hmm. have modified and uh, the the rifle and have mm -hmm. added not only this optic but other retro style optics okay. to the game. Mm -hmm. So once I found that out, I said absolutely. A gentleman's name is Forrest Hatcher. I rich mm -hmm. reached out to Mr. Hatcher and. He sent me several's, and as a matter of fact, all the way down here, you won't say it, it'll say Proto 1, Prototype 1, which was the very first optic that they sent us. Okay. For the, so literally, when we say that this is a one off, it's it is one -off. truly a <laughs> one off. Yeah. Okay, very nicely done. Yeah. So, for Thank folks you. out there, if they want to find out more about you guys, Cheating Death Customs, okay. uh, you can find us on Instagram. Uh, we love to answer questions. We are truly. Like Peter and, and Sam, we, mm -hmm. we love what we do. We're truly passionate for what we do. How long have you guys been building guns? Since 2015. 2015, okay. Yeah. yeah, I like the fact that you're getting involved in stuff like this, you know. I'm not a video gamer myself, but my kids are. And I think we've always got to think about the next generation yes. of folks getting into this. And this is how they're going to discover guns. And Absolutely. these are going to be the dream guns. So... You know, kudos for that. I, I wish more companies did what you guys are doing. Oh, I appreciate it, Hank. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you finally oh, in person. Same here, man. Pleasure. So, my name is Dominic Whitaker. I am an employee here at uh, Andrew's Custom Leather. And for the Fallout collaboration thing going on, I made this. An NCR AR Magazine bandolier. So you take your AR mags here, and then Browning High Power Magazines go here. And for the Browning High Power itself, it goes in this tanker holster. And you can see all the details. We have... Yeah, Sunset sarsaparilla and Nuka Cola bottle caps made into conchos for the piece itself. And then on this top corner here, I'll just move the whole thing down so it's easier to see, is the logo of the NCR, the New California Republic. Yeah, so for folks who don't know, I just found this out, Dom. Uh, you have the bottle caps because that's like money, right? Yeah, uh, like money. the currency in Fallout is bottle caps. It mm -hmm. used to be an exchange rate for like a bottle of water would be a bottle cap, but then they right. just started treating the caps as currency themselves. Yeah, so this is bling. <laughs> for all the yeah. people who don't, I know obviously folks watching this will, will know, but for the folks like me that don't know, bling. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah that's concho started out as old peso and dollar coins anyway, mm -hmm. so just a return to tradition. How long have you been playing Fallout? Oh, God, I've been playing Fallout since uh, college, so about 2011, okay. and that's when I was first introduced to it. Mm -hmm. I started with Fallout 3, then New Vegas, and I fell in love with New Vegas, and I've been playing it ever since. Okay. Very nice. And what was it that, you know, obviously you've been working here with Sam doing leather stuff, but what made you decide to, like, do this? Oh, it's just... I like making props and things from movie, TV, and video games as is anyway. And so when I was approached with this, hey, do you think you could do something like this for Fallout, which happens to be one of my favorite fictional franchises, I just jumped on that and absolutely. So okay. I already had a, con a concept that I roughed out for Eric to, sh to show him and see what he thought, and then this is the refined thing, and it just one of those passion projects doesn't come, along, doesn't come around as often as you'd like. So Yeah. And if you guys don't know this, we have a video with Dom doing uh, leather carving. Uh, he does some great work, so you guys can check that out. Now, would you do this for someone out there? Something. Would you like take on? Yeah. Would this? you take it on as a job? Something like this? Yeah. Yes. But mm -hmm. uh, an exact duplicate of this? No. This is a one of a kind. It's going with the collaboration. There you go. So you guys can find out more about that. But if they, if someone's interested in getting a rig, they can hit you up, right? Certainly. Okay. All right. So. I'm not sure if we're gonna have that put this up by the time you guys are done. Maybe you guys will be done first, Pete. But basically, this is the cast, including me. Mm -hmm. So, so Joanna's telling me that I was the bad guy in that. 
it started out a potentially bad guy, and then we changed it. We changed it. I like uh -huh. to keep everything. I don't like to do the negative. So okay. uh, a lot of so we were going to go with a wastelander, and then they were going to be in, maybe get into a firefight. But I figured that you know with three hours of time we couldn't really get into something staged like that. So mm -hmm. um, we were looking at we changed it from a wastelander into just a scavenger. Someone is out there on their own trying to find you know their way. And right. so we figured that if we were going to do that and then leave it open ended, um, then the audience is able to make up their mind on what happened. Did, mm -hmm. did they get did he get blasted? Did he get taken, you know, captive, or is now is he saved and brought back to where we just saw them get ready to go? I mean, obviously they're in a spot where they have tools and they have items, and now it's a it's almost like a home or a hideout mm -hmm. because something caught their attention. But if you notice that thing that caught their attention was way away; it wasn't walking down and touching the building. Okay. So obviously they have some sort of parameter system that lets them know something's going on. Right. Um, and so the thought process was to have this scavenger scavenging, looking for parts that he could, you know, build something that he needs with, um, hence you. Mm -hmm. And um, these two now are making sure that someone isn't coming to check out their spot, to come and raid them, um, but to handle their business. Okay. So, you know, what was the impetus for that? Because I think when you were first coming out here, you weren't planning to do that. So did you show up and see these cool outfits these guys have or? so i came here and i met this guy uh -huh. dominic dressed up and 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 shocked me with that i was pretty blown away about mm -hmm. how detailed he got it and then mm -hmm. i was like yo this is really cool and um i was thinking that we needed something to put out there to get some interest in what we were doing mm -hmm. and so we were just going to do maybe some pictures a couple of you know light photos i threw on my instagram and joe had tagged me in uh her post and she's dressed up uh as she's dressed up now and i was like oh man now it's we gotta, on <laughs> we gotta do we have to do something more yeah. And that's something more, again, if you're an artist or creative, you let things, and you're able to channel them and just let them come out. Immediately started thinking, my brain started going, and everything kind of flowed out, so I storyboarded it all, um, and then um, left it open-ended in the end. Okay, very cool. So Dominic, you know, just tell us about this outfit you've put together. Obviously we're talking to you, you do this kind of stuff, but what's... Oh, yeah. So, What's going on here? So my idea, you know, because it's basically the two types of people you encounter and follow are vault dwellers or, you know, survivors, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my idea was I was part of, like, a survivor family and all that, and just years of salvage going through old military bases, and, you know, that's where I got the flight suit and the combat uh, boots. And okay. My story, as far as where I may have found this thing, and the armor, this is actually modeled as close as I could get it on short notice from the leather armor from Fallout 4. Okay. So that's about as accurate as I could get. And then the bandolier that I made, I had strapped on over top of this. Mm -hmm. and so so yeah. this is armor? Yeah, this is close to leather armor in game. So that's okay. just a big, hard piece of leather. Because mm -hmm. apparently in Fallout, leather armor works to stop right. bullets, apparently. <laughs> but, um, it could. It's level one. I, I know, I know. It could happen, yeah. But yeah, so um, basically like an, an NCR service mechanic or NCR trooper or scout or something, because they have the rangers as a... Mm -hmm little military group in them so that's kind of what i was going for just you know a wastelander kind of associated with the ncr just trying to make his way through the wasteland okay very nice um do you guys dress up in the shop like this often you know i know you guys are into monty python oh, here yeah. uh, so. sam never really knows what to expect with right. me um there have been times he's coming to the shop and i'm wearing 12th century knight's kit with chainmail head to toe and a surcoat and a helmet and other times I'm just like a Jedi or a Sith or a plague doctor. It's just, he never really knows. Right. He, he loves that stuff, I'm sure. Oh yeah, it's just, yeah. how's it going? What are we today, Mr. Whitaker? Yeah. So, Very uh, nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's go to Joanna. Yes. Um, so I know Dominic was saying there's the folks uh, that are, like, I guess on the outside and then the people in the vaults. Yes, so I was, a, I based myself off a vault dweller. Mm -hmm. I was a huge fan of Fallout 4, have probably like close to 600 hours playing the game and when I played the game I played as the female character who mm -hmm. you know was frozen in time and then came out so oh, okay. kind of modeled myself off to her okay. you know, she goes out into the world after just being a mom and becomes a complete badass and that's what I'm imagining happened here you know mm -hmm. she she came in and did a mission uh, here for uh, Sam's leathers and just became, you know, another person working on leather shop here and right. joined their settlement. So that's okay, what cool. we're going on. So how did you put this outfit together? 
Um, I am a cosplayer. I will be mm. honest. This was like a last minute, like, whoo, we're going to an event. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. So duct tape and Amazon. But okay. um, but I do have, like, I do cosplay. I go to cons all the time. Mm -hmm. um, gender band costumes, you know, Winter Soldier. I've done all kinds of crazy things. Okay. But um, my next cosplay is actually on Sunday. I have a custom-made scant uh, commander outfit for a Star Trek Next Generation that's actually custom sewn and have okay. all the pips We're going to have to get some pictures of this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. I apologize. I didn't do more effort. Had no, but this we looks great. <laughs> do yeah, more of what right. we didn't really know what we were doing today until the genius uh, that is Pete just, let's do it. So Thank you. Mm -hmm. it, just, it just came together. Yep. Okay, awesome. My, my outfit, Lola. <laughs> Uh, basically, this is a Fort Scott Munitions shirt because Pete wanted, you know, he said I look too clean. So we ha I had to volunteer a shirt to get damaged. So Big shout out, out to Fort Scott. Yeah, Fort Scott Munitions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, y your shirt's now in, is going to be in the movies. So that's it. That's, you know, I just followed whatever Pete told me to do, basically. <laughs> you know, that's, I like that you did some fun. vintaging. You did yeah, some, uh, well, that, that was Dominic and uh, your husband. <laughs> He went crazy, Rolanda. Like, he Bear. almost he almost burned this down. <laughs> I took it to the belt sander. I'd, uh, yeah, yeah. A little singe here and there. I didn't try to set it on fire. No, when you gave it to him, <laughs> it <on> <laughs> yeah, he oh. set it on fire. He Perfect. didn't even know how to shut that thing. I was like, let's just keep it going. Yeah, I was like, stop it out. It'll run into gas at some point. Yeah. All right. So, what exactly are you doing in Orlando? Well, this week we have, um, you guys might know, Roland and I work for geeksandgamers.com. Absolutely, yes. a big YouTube channel. So this yes. week we actually have on uh, Sunday, we have our meetup, our big meetup. We have two two times that we're going to be meeting up at a really, really cool club. He actually rented out the Rosen Plaza, one of the facilities there in Orlando, right across from the convention center. We have mm -hmm. a few thousand people descending down, fans coming down. And we're just going to kick it with the fans as a big thank you for everyone being fans of Geeks and Gamers. So, oh, sweet. Of course, me being me, That's decided awesome. <laughs> perfect time to cosplay, yeah. so I'm doing right. a cosplay during that event. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, somewhat, so is Rolando going to wear no. anything? Or? No, he never cosplays. No? He's fly drones and take video. Yeah, oh, okay. He's, he's, uh, he's taking this a little bit more okay. seriously than I, right. I guess. <laughs> All right, very cool. Let's see if I can do this the first take. I want to thank Cheating Death Customs. Eric is here, of course. Pete from Carolina Custom Foam. There you go. Joanna and Rolando of Latinos Locked and Loaded. Loaded, Locked and Loaded Latinos. Latino, got it. I'm doing it, this is the take. Yes. This is the take, there you go. And also, uh, Geeks and Gadgets. Geeks and Gamers. Geeks and Gamers. Oh my God. Okay. Rolling, okay, no Geeks. Point. Okay, so, Latinos Locked and Loaded. Nope. nope. Locked, <laughs> Latino. Latino. Locked, Locked, Locked and Loaded, loaded Latinos. <laughs> I'm never ever gonna get this in my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Geeks and Gamers. Yes. It, yeah. There you go. Um, so, we, we also have Dominic here of Andrews Custom Leather, okay? And Sam Andrews for hosting lo the location here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks to everyone, and make sure you guys follow all of these guys. Look out for this cool stuff coming out from Fallout. Um, I'm really glad I came by, and this is fun, man. My kids are loving it. I've been sending them pictures, and, you know, I don't really have kids. I have, like, a 22 and 23 year old and they're all about this yeah so there you go all right guys we'll see you on the next one we're out peace peace war war never changes make sure to check out handstrange.com you can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts